you very much uh, for the invitation. It's a real pleasure uh, to be here uh, presenting this uh, joint work um, uh, with Jeff Nugent. Uh, the first thing I would like to say is that uh, the title is, is quite telling, and uh, let me just uh, give in the excited debate about uh, data quality and inequality yesterday. I will start to open with a disclaimer. Uh, the title, as I said, is quite telling. I mean, the paper tries to look at what explains uh, the reasons uh, for the rigidity of labor regulation, not only across countries, but over time. Uh, and we look at the roles of structural reforms as potential determinants of, uh, of uh, employment uh, regulation rigidity and their impact, the impact of these regulations on uh, growth and inequality. Okay, then inequality will be on the correct side of, uh, of the regressions in, according to what we heard yesterday uh, uh, in, this, in this paper. Okay, then um, what is this paper about? I mean, you're gonna be talking broadly. Uh, the emphasis here will be on, on, on less on inequality and more on these public policies. And uh, we're gonna be looking at labor market institutions, which is uh, obviously a very important topic. And in particular, we're gonna be looking at one of them. Okay, we're not gonna be looking at different interactions between very important uh, labor market institutions. We're gonna be focusing on one. And the one we're gonna be looking at are the, the laws and regulations. I mean, we're gonna be looking at uh, employment protection. I said something about the silly insight, looking at this uh, EPL indexes, and, uh, and the silly insight is essentially, well, if you care about reform, right? I mean, if you observe changes in these indexes, that would be uh, you know, an approximation to reform, okay? Uh, and of course, in the, if you observe uh, no change in these indexes, that would be a good uh, uh, hint that these rigidities are indeed important, or at least uh, long-lasting, okay? Then that's what uh, the paper is about. I mean, can we come up with uh, measures of the rigidity of these labor market regulations over time, okay, uh, in the past, uh, and, see, and, and, and try to explain them and then uh, go back and, uh, and look at the implications of these changes uh, in terms of both economic growth and income inequality. Hence, uh, why this paper is in this, in this conference, okay? Uh, the contribution of the paper, if any, it tries to be twofold. I mean, it's an empirical and, and a policy contribution. Um, and uh, the policy contribution, I, I think, is, is quite clear. I mean, the, the kind of empirical academic contribution uh, departs from uh, kind of a caricature of this uh, literature. Uh, and I kind of characterize it as uh, basically kind of three features. Uh, you know, most of this literature is confined to the post-1995 period. Um, when not confined to the post-1995 period, uh, focuses on two regions, which are OECD and Latin America. <laughs> and third, I mean, it's the, the third uh, feature I already mentioned, it focuses on levels as opposed to, to changes, okay? Uh, it uh, just occurred to me yesterday that this, you know, if I describe the literature on income distribution, uh, it's, it's possibly a, a not very unfair uh, caricature, but in any case, I'm talking about EPL, not about uh, income distribution here, okay? Uh, then, there are two main objectives. Uh, one is to extend the absolutely seminal paper uh, by Botero et al. Uh, in 2004 that come up with these indexes for uh, one point in time, and second, to assess whether or not our effort, our exercise, makes any sense, or it's, you know, what's the worth of, uh, of, uh, of this, uh, this exercise. Let me just spell out, because I'm, I don't assume that uh, this audience is familiar with this work, uh, in, at least not at the level of the, the, the theory required to, to follow I mean, what we're doing, because we're gonna follow this very closely. This is uh, one of the, the various uh, papers by uh, Jankov, Laporta, Lopez de Silanes, and Schleifer. Uh, this is one is the quality of labor one uh, that came out in the quarterly journal in 2004. Uh, and this is, uh, I mean, I'm sure you saw courts, uh, you saw a number of them. Uh, this is kind of the theoretical, philosophical basis to the doing business uh, project at, uh, at the World Bank. Uh, and this particular paper uh, looks 
at, uh, at the labor, okay, uh, labor, uh, labor regulations. Uh, it focuses on 85 countries for year 1997. And uh, what we do is essentially we use exactly the same uh, methodology, uh, extend it first for that particular uh, time period to a considerable, considerably larger number of countries. Okay, I mean, they originally have 85. Uh, we go to 145, 150 countries, which is you know, almost, almost doubling the sample. Okay, and that would have, of course, implications to what kind of, I mean, as you can imagine, the guys that are, the countries that are being added are at the very bottom of the income per capita distribution that, that uh, you know, increases uh, the variability, uh, the variance of, in terms of uh, per capita uh, income levels of, in this sample, uh, and then enhance changes slightly uh, the potential explanations of, of these changes. Okay, uh, then what we do, we try to extend it backwards um, all the way to 1945, uh, uh, but uh, you know, the, the real action starts after 1960, and that's where we, we cut it out, okay? Uh, objective two, of course, is uh, to assess new s this new measure. We call it um, LUNRIC, which is uh, an index of uh, labor, the rigidity of labor market regulations, okay? Uh, and we do that in a number of ways. Uh, we try to replicate uh, the Botero et al. Uh, result. Uh, they put forward three competing theories, three competing explanations. Um, for those of you familiar with this uh, line of work, the one that comes on top is legal origins, right? And legal, I mean, according to, I mean, not only this paper, but a number of them, uh, you know, the, the origin of your, the country legal system plays a determinant role um, in a number of uh, institutional features. Uh, and here, the, we're go, I'll go talk a little bit more about it later, but it's uh, the contrast uh, between civil uh, um, English and French law traditions uh, uh, is, is, is the main, uh, is where the action is uh, in this particular story. Uh, the important uh, thing to say here is that, uh, you know, they find legal, legal origin uh, plays a very, very important role, and just the addition of, you know, all these countries at the bottom of the per capita income distribution, I mean, you can imagine, I mean, brings in the role of, uh, quite naturally, uh, increases the power of this, what they call efficiency theory, which is level of development, okay? That's one change uh, that is not uh, uh, very surprising, uh, but, you know, follows from, from the exercise. And this is the first assessment we provide. The second one, well, now we have this measure over time. Uh, then, you know, we see uh, what happens in terms of uh, levels and changes. Then, I mean, you know, this, you know, how much inertia is there? Uh, you know, what, what, you know, do this, this, you know, legal theories, legal warnings still play a fundamental role in explaining, you know, levels over time uh, or changes over time? Uh, and we find that it, they do still play a role, but I mean, it's a much more nuanced story that uh, we, can, we can put forward. Uh, you know, examine uh, changes uh, instead of, um, of levels. And because, uh, you know, the, it, it's a more nuanced story, I mean, we need to search for other determinants. Um, uh, in some cases, uh, you know, per capita income disappears. In some cases, there's very little support for legal origins. Uh, then what we do is uh, we embark uh, on a, a search for potential other determinants. Uh, I mean, you know, in a very kind of humble way, uh, trying to assess whether or not this construction exercise, I mean, this data construction exercise makes any sense, okay? I mean, it's not a kind of, uh, there's no intention of providing a final theory of uh, a final explanation for, for these changes, but it's just to see whether or not they, they make some sense. And of course, uh, at the very end, I mean, we do, we do also look at the effects. I mean, because now you can endogenize uh, the CPL changes, you, you couldn't before because you have one point in time whether or not, uh, you know, they have any effect on growth and, and economic inequality, okay? Um, I'm gonna give you the conclusions because I still have a zillion slides to go and uh, I'm, I'm not gonna finish, obviously. They are, uh, you know, they find uh, that uh, legal origins, uh, you know, a very powerful explanation. Uh, we find that, uh, you know, over time, 
particularly in terms of changes. I mean, if you care about labor market reform, I mean, legal origins play a much, much more, uh, 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 less strong, less strong role. Um, there is some evidence uh, for, uh, for legal origins, some evidence for the importance of uh, the level of per capita income, but what we find that's quite interesting is that other structural reforms, we look at a number of other, uh, other we look at crises, um, we look at structural factors, etc., and uh, we find that other structural reforms play uh, 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 kind of an interesting role. Uh, in particular, uh, you know, trade liberalization uh, seems, uh, uh, you know, to have a, a negative impact on, on rigidity of labor market uh, uh, regulation, and we have an opposite effect played by financial liberalization, which, I mean, if you're trying to design reform packages, uh, you know, it's, it's something that, uh, you know, you, 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 it's kind of an interesting insight, okay? Uh, this is all done on five-year averages for 140 countries. Then, you know, a policymaker shouldn't uh, take this as uh, any sort of guidance, but, I mean, it highlights the importance of this uh, 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 you know, interactions between reforms when designing, uh, designing packages, okay? Uh, and the last one, I think, which will be the, uh, maybe kind of big interest to this audience, but the relief uh, is that, I mean, we do provide uh, evidence for what we call the Freeman, Richard Freeman conjecture, uh, which is essentially says that, uh, you know, this labor market, uh, rigidity of labor market regulations, I mean, have very little uh, it's a very ambiguous effect in terms of growth, right? But they do indeed reduce income inequality, and we do find uh, support for that over time, right? In a, in a panel setting, which is obviously something that, um, you know, if you don't have this set of measures, cannot be done, okay? Anyway, the um, outline of the talk uh, is introduction and motivation. We took up 15. 15? Yes. Yes, excellent, Dom, okay. And, uh, and then I have a, uh, uh, the real talk uh, <laughs> that goes, I mean, how did we construct Landrig? What does it look like? How, does it, how good is it, this assessment? We know, you know the results already. And then uh, conclusions, uh, maybe this afternoon I can, I can get to that point. Uh, conclusions and, and next steps. I'll, I'll fly over the slides now because I, I presume you, you know what I'm going, okay? I'm gonna you know, measure uh, Landrig in, in three easy steps. And, and to one checks, and another one is balances, okay? Uh, then we take the Botero uh, methodology, uh, and uh, we combine it with uh, a, a compendium of labor laws uh, uh, that the ILO has uh, generated in the last five or six years, okay? Uh, this, is, um, this is Botero, Botero uh, Employment Law Index, has four components. Um, I don't have time to go into them uh, you know, in, in, in greater detail, uh, but I mean, they can be mapped very in a very straightforward manner in this uh, data set. This is the website of the data, of the, of the NATLAX uh, data set, and it, it, what it is is essentially a compendium of labor laws, okay? Then we have uh, different countries, and the ILO very kindly uh, uh, classify each law on different, uh, on different areas. Then, uh, you know, for example, Australia, we have 2,506 laws since 1945, and they are uh, classified over time in each one of different, uh, different uh, subjects. The list of countries, as you can see, is uh, it's endless. Uh, the list of categories is also endless. Uh, an important thing for us is that they map into the four, in the four uh, elements, in the four uh, components of this index. Then we have labor contracts, part-time versus full-time contracts is one of the Categories. This is for Algeria, it's a random example. Uh, cost of increasing hours work at, oh, sorry. Uh, I can't help you, I'm sorry, apologies, yeah. Um, Right, uh, hours work, it's another category, and then you have, uh, you know, cost of firing is another one, and dismissal. So we're gonna look only at these four uh, boxes for 150 countries, okay? I mean, you could kind of, you know, do something more refined, but this is, that, you know, two guys and 12 research assistants. Okay, I was expecting zero. <laughs> okay, all right, I have plenty of time there, it's gonna slow down now. Okay, first step then, I mean, we start with this uh, EPL, Okay, uh, and the first thing we do is we know then the, the, the result. I mean, they have, a, like us, a very detailed uh, web appendix with a list of these laws, okay? And it's like an economics exam now, okay? Imagine, you know, discuss 
Piketty, right? It's question one. Uh, and uh, you know, somebody gives you, okay, this is, this is the essay, this is an A, this is a B, this is a C, and this is a D, okay? All right, and this is a very kind of candid assessment of this, this literature, and uh, I hope you're getting the gist of it. I mean, there is no way you're gonna come up with indexes uh, that, me, that, that try to reflect anything important about labor market rigidities that do not involve a degree of judgment, okay? There are aspects of it that can be easily quantifiable. They are usually the less policy relevant ones, okay? Then this is a, an issue, I mean, if you are, you know, very uh, sanguine about data, that is simply unavoidable in this literature, okay? Then if you don't, uh, particularly sympathetic to the view, I mean, you, you know, better, uh, you know, stick to exchange rates or something a bit, uh, you know, uh, uh, more objective if you want, okay? Then what we do is essentially, that's what we have. We st that's the starting point, okay? We, we, we know the laws from Botero, we know the, mar the, the grades that they give to these laws from Botero, and we add to that the, the same laws for that five-year period from uh, NAPLEX, okay? And then we just essentially, we come up with a key, an answer key, okay? Once we have the answer key, we know exactly how it maps, we extend, okay? Right, I mean, we bring in new exams to mark, which are, you know, the, the, the 85 to 145 countries, okay? And then we go back in time, all right, and mark all the exams all the way back to, to 1960. Okay, this is exactly what we do, okay? Um, you know, that's the second step. I mean, first we extend uh, the marking, if you want, uh, the, the gener generating these indexes, okay? And then third step, uh, we, we just go back. And because these this laws and regulations change slowly over time, and because, I mean, you know, we, you know, we want to see, you know, the growth aspect of it. I mean, then we, we're going to look at these five-year averages. Then, I mean, we, we're going to kind of block them uh, in this, in this, uh, in this five-year uh, boxes. Okay. And then we have, you know, three steps and five steps actually. One is checks, and the other one is balances. I mean, the checks. I mean, we compared, uh, you know, our uh, index with, um, uh, you know, the ones for the OECD in, in Latin America. We generate 2000 and 2004 because. Uh, relax again. Uh, 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 2004, because of uh, is, is, is the first vintage World Bank doing business, which is still very much, uh, you know, in this tradition. I mean, I don't know how much you follow that work, but it has changed quite a lot after 2006. Them, uh, and it, when you compare, I mean, you know, discrepancies are literally minimal. Okay, them, I mean, we're quite uh, quite happy uh, uh, to see that we can, uh, uh, you know, I mean. I don't know if we're doing something right, but uh, you know we're not doing anything different from everybody else. Um, and balances, I mean, it's uh, uh, you know Jeff is key, very keen on Middle East. Um, you know he's uh, you know kind of searching the web and bringing in history to check, to try to check uh, whether or not these uh, indicators make any sense. Uh, and I mean we're still quite happy with them. Them, um, I'm going to talk about uh, you know the impact of these balances in a, in, a, in a little bit. Okay, how does it uh, look like? Because I mean you can imagine that uh, you know there's no action at all, right? I mean these are laws. Uh, then you know they change very slowly. Uh, you know the way you know how flexible, or how uh, rigid uh, the implications of this law are also kind of you know very very slowly change. I mean you can imagine that well. After 1991, everybody moves up, but uh, you know there, there's very little variation. Okay, uh, this is the first um, uh, the, an important uh, uh, comparison, uh, and, and it's important for a couple of reasons. First, because in the Botero paper, I mean, it takes uh, I believe five or six pages in QJE. Okay, uh, Portugal is obviously a, a French. Uh, legal origin uh, system. Uh, New Zealand is obviously, a, a, or not obviously, a typical case of uh, English uh, uh, legal origin, uh, uh, you know, legal system. Uh, and they, you know, get a lot of mileage, finally. Thank you so much. Uh, I get a lot of mileage out of, uh, of, of this difference, okay? Uh, you know, Portugal is much more rigid labor market than New Zealand. And you can say, well, you know, does it matter to look at over time? Well, if you do look over time, and if you choose, uh, you know, how 
uh, the point of comparison, you can you know, draw a very different uh, 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 set of conclusions if you look at the beginning of the 60s than if you look at 2004. There are a number of individual studies of, uh, there are no, uh, we don't know for Portugal, but for New Zealand, we do know individual lawyer efforts to measure, and the behavior of the index is very much like ours, then that's the checks and balances bit, okay? Then, um, you know, we have a bunch of uh, other graphs, I mean, you have 145 countries, you can generate this very easily, but you can see there is movement, okay? There is action. Uh, this is China, India, and Brazil. You're not going to see it very uh, clearly either. And there are a number of very interesting patterns and legal origins. When you start to look at this, changes over time, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know it's, it's less clear whether or not uh, it's, uh, it's uh, that type of, uh, of, um, of pattern emerges, okay? These are the, the Botero and, uh, and uh, et al. results. We essentially replicate them. Um, I'll just summarize uh, what we found uh, very quickly. I mean, the, I have a number of slides, as you can see, and I'm not going to be talking about them. Then there's some indication that uh, it's going to go very fast. Uh, or that was this, you know, the, that uh, trade uh, liberalization uh, has a negative impact on, on labor market reforms and the other effect by, by financial reforms. Uh, and then, oops, oops. Okay, then we tried to, you know, uh, replicate uh, the original results. These are the original results. Uh, sorry, this is cross-section, uh, pooled OLS, and you can see it's pretty much, uh, you know, follows it very closely. Uh, then, you know, a couple of uh, sample splits where, uh, you know, there are some interesting uh, uh, differences that I don't have any time to talk about. Uh, then we start uh, to look at changes, and you can see suddenly all the significance from the legal origin start to disappear. Okay, and that's, I mean, what prompted us to look for other determinants. Then we go on and on looking for different determinants uh, and, and, and don't find, uh, um, don't find uh, uh, much other than those uh, structural reforms. Okay, I mean, look at uh, different types of crises. It's going to go very fast. Uh, you know, look at different uh, political crises and factors. Uh, and uh, and uh, the, the slides are going to be online. Um, that's why I'm flying. Uh, and then we have some uh, evidence on, on the Freeman conjecture in particular. Uh, okay, it's not moving, it's not my fault. Uh, in the sense that on the, on the left-hand uh, side, uh, the first three columns, I mean, you can see that Lung Rig has a negative and significant impact on income inequality. Caveat here, this is weed, not sweet. It's weed true. Uh, I mean, then we, when we send the extended abstract, we're planning to use a number of different measures of uh, of uh, income inequality, but I mean, that's, this is the one we have right now. Uh, and and, and f you know, the columns four to six, you have uh, the, um, the results for growth, and you can see it's, it's ambiguous, okay? Then for this audience, I mean, you can, of course, say, oh, we knew this all along. Uh, we haven't seen evidence that, uh, you know, suggests that there is a lot of, uh, so, you know, some strong support for the Freeman conjecture in a cross-country panel setting, and I think this is, uh, uh, we find it interesting, but that obviously just us. Then, uh, then just summarize, if I can, okay, all right, I, I really appreciate it, it's extremely generous. Uh, then I think the paper offers a new index of uh, labor market rigidities, uh, legislation rigidity, I mean, it's totally de jure, I mean, I don't think, you, you know, I don't want anybody to have a different idea. Uh, it's a panel since 1960. Uh, when, you know, we can see quite a lot of interesting action. I mean, revisit the original explanations, potential competing explanations for these changes, and we find slightly uh, uh, different, um, different uh, results from before for reasons that I think are quite clear. I mean, not surprising. Uh, and uh, there are two uh, kind of uh, additions uh, to that list of findings. The first, the first is regarding the importance of different reforms uh, in terms of with important implications in terms of uh, design of reform packages, and the other, this um, uh, evidence support in the Freeman uh, conjecture. Thank you very much. Apologies for, for running over. <laughs>